All right, anytime you guys are ready. All right, my name is Ada Erdahl. I'm Emma Hennig. My name is Darman Ali. I'm Sarah Smith. And today we will be presenting to you about our topic, mental health and ending mental stigma. Mental health stigma. Our dreaded question is how can we prevent stigmas against mental illnesses in teenagers? And then some of our learning targets is that you will understand what mental illnesses are. <coughs> in your brain that impacts like how you view the world or your senses or things like that. So mental health is a state of physical well-being. Uh, stigma is defined as a mark of disgrace associated with a particular circumstance, quality, or a person. And then bipolar disorder is a mental illness that's characterized by episodes of extreme depression or mania that range way beyond what normal emotions would Schizophrenia is the breakdown between rational thought, emotion, and behavior. So you have a faulty perception and you like have a withdrawal from reality into delusion. So that line between what's real and what isn't becomes blurred. And it's not necessarily hearing voices, even though that's commonly associated with schizophrenia, that's not what it is really. OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder is uncontrollable repeated behavior. PTSD or post-traumatic stress Anxiety, depression, and depression disorders are different disorders. Anxiety um, disorders are mental health disorders that are associated or characterized by worry. Anxiety over fear that can interfere with the way that you go throughout your day. And depression disorders <coughs> are characterized by long-lasting sadness or feelings of worthlessness that also create a lack of desire to um, be a part of things that you used to care about or really enjoy. of men and women who have spent time in war zones experience PTSD. Over 50% of adults with mental illnesses report receiving no treatment at all. And comparing like our community globally and nationally, there was a study done that measured adults and youth on the prevalence of mental illness and the measures that states have taken to prevent them in Minnesota in 2011 was marked 12th and then we moved up to 5th in 2014 in the study ranked among all the states which shows that we're already pretty um, strong at caring about mental illness and laws that are passed but that we're still improving and that's a really good um, thing that's happening in Minnesota. Nationally only 25% of adults that struggle with mental illness feel accepted which shows that like accepted and cared about because of their mental illness which shows that 25% <coughs> of adults feel like they're experiencing stigma or lack of care and that's not good on a national level. And then globally, 45% um, of countries don't have any policy regarding mental health like at all. 30% um, have no programs that are there to help people and 25% of countries in the world don't have any legislation or laws passed to try to pr protect people with mental illness. So some facts to help understand
many people feel like they can't get help or there's no one there to support them just because it's not an okay thing to talk about in society and that's something that is important to try to change? A prevalent stigma against mental illnesses is stigma against getting help and most people don't want to get help because they're afraid of being seen as broken, damaged, or crazy. Our final two concepts is having a self-stigma against yourself because of your mental illness. So a self-stigma is when you believe that you are uh, damaged like mentally because of your mental illness and <coughs> people usually have self-stigmas because they blame themselves for having their mental illness which isn't completely true. <coughs> National Alliance on Mental Illness. That's a screenshot from their web page. They have um, organized groups that are trying to talk to Congress members to try to protect laws about mental illnesses. They have a lot of resources for you to contact if you feel like you're struggling with mental illness. And they have um, a lot of great things happening on that website. There's also therapists that are there to help you. We interviewed Joey Collins, the second bullet point, and he's a great resource if you're wanting to talk to someone about something you're struggling with. And he is right here in Apple Valley, so that's easy. Mentalhealth.gov connects you to all these other organizations regarding every um, mental illness or places that you can go to to ask for help. And then finally, endthestigmatoday.com is a website that is actively trying to teach people about stigmas, about mental illnesses, and trying to find ways to lessen them or stop them in society. Awesome, so for one of our interviews, we interviewed Joey Collins, who's a licensed professional clinical counselor. So he's a therapist and he works right in the Anchor Bank, right down 140, so it's super close to ECU and super convenient. Um, he was really chill, like we were all surprised by how nice and accepting he was right when we walked in the door. Um, some of the main stigmas he identified were definitely the stigma against getting help, like why do you need to see someone, you must be crazy, what's going on with you, like the fact that you see a counselor doesn't necessarily mean there's something wrong, even though that's what a lot of people think. Um, wanted to make sure you guys felt that it's not just like sitting on the couch and how does this make you feel or tell me about your childhood. It's really, he's trying to connect with you and he's trying to give you a safe space to process things and a lot of the times he says it doesn't even feel like therapy. So the stigmas are very real but very uncalled for. Another person we interviewed was Ann Schollen. She's an ECU counselor. She has last names P through S and she goes app at 11. She had, she said that depression and anxiety are the most common within our school, and she doesn't see stigmas as often with students as she does parents because the parents tend to think that there's something wrong with their child when there clearly isn't. And she said <coughs> to prevent stigmas, it would be best to just be open about your mental illnesses because the more people are open about their mental illnesses and are willing to talk about them, the more it becomes normalized and it's just seen every day. So some ways we can uh, overcome stigmas is having an open mind. So make sure you know your facts before stating your opinion and educate yourself. So once again, knowing your facts and just informing yourself ask questions and start conversations. And with asking questions, make sure to be polite because some people might get offended by the things you might say and speaking out. So uh, just publicly speak about one's feelings that normally they wouldn't express themselves. Um, we found a couple apps that are offered at least on iPhones to help people that are struggling with mental illness. The first one over there is called Sibling. And it's a really cool app because it's kind of like texting so that you can talk to them about things that you might be struggling with and um, anything else that you might be worried about and they can connect you with resources. And the app is free to download, but you unfortunately have to pay to get connected with a healthcare professional. Um, and then the other app we found was What's Up? And it is a free app and it's got, these are some screenshots from the app. It has a lot of different um, strategies for people to deal with mental illnesses. They've got things that can help you ground yourself or a journal that you can keep. And then they also have a lot of information about different mental illnesses and what to do to help yourself. All right, so we did a small survey around ECU just to get our results in our school community. And we asked the question, what is OCD? And we also spelled it out that it was obsessive compulsive disorder. 
Um, the brain answers right here are people who wrote uncontrolled or repeated behavior, which is correct, because OCD is an anxiety disorder based on, um, that makes these uncontrollable or repeated behaviors happen. As you can see, um, obviously the right answers increase <coughs> with age as a general trend. Um, it's not blue, it's not liking things a certain way, and it's not the orange, it's not perfectionism, it's actually an anxiety disorder, so it's not like, liking your grilled meat or liking to have your nails trimmed, like it's this. And some people also don't like all of the above, but you can also see it's more prevalent to get the right answer in girls than boys at EQ, but it's still pretty common to hear wrong answers and to be misinformed about what OCD is. He also asked about what schizophrenia is, and the right answer is once again in green, it's impaired mental function, right? Your breakdown between reality and non-reality. And Hearing voices was a pretty common answer, and in most cases, it's almost as commonly chosen as impaired mental function, but hearing voices isn't necessarily the definition of schizophrenia. Um, once again, you can see with age, the right answers do increase, except for, for some reason in 12th grade, the 11th graders are a little more knowledgeable about this. Um, so the correct answers are common, but as you can see, there's still a lot of misinformation and people not understanding. Another reason that a mental illness could develop just out of that feeling of like aloneness. 